Good morning, friends. I'm glad to be back with you today. I enjoyed seeing so many of our friends at our snow cone event this past Tuesday. We had a great time. Um, speaking of friends, I texted many of your parents this week. I asked them to send in pictures of you with your friends. So thank you to the moms who sent in pictures. So let's take a look at some of these friends. I love seeing these groups of friends. Friendship is so special. We all need a friend who loves us and wants the best for us. Let's look into our Bibles to Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, which tells us about Jesus and a group of friends. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it, and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. When reading this story, we tend to focus on the healing of the paralyzed man and the reaction of the Pharisees to Jesus' words. But I want to stop for a minute and focus on the four determined friends. The room was packed full. It was beyond standing room only. There was not even room at the door. Everyone turned out to see Jesus and to hear what he had to speak. But this group of friends had a mission. They needed to get their friend to Jesus. The paralyzed man needed healing and they just knew Jesus would provide it. They faced a challenge though. There was no room to get their friend inside the home to reach his healing. Many would have given up. They would have said, maybe next time. Maybe they would have just waited outside in the hopes that Jesus would see them as he came out of the house. But these weren't just any friends. These were radical friends. These were dedicated friends, but more importantly, they were also friends of radical faith. They needed Jesus now. They didn't care who was in the room with him or the barriers that stood in their way. The paralyzed man, their friend needed Jesus now. Let's take a look at Luke 5, 17. Luke is in the New Testament. So Matthew, Mark, then Luke. So Luke 5, 17. On one of those days, as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. The room was filled with Pharisees. These were the religious leaders, the educated, the elite. But these four friends 
had no thought for the status of the men in the room. Their friend needed help, and their friend needed help now. So the paralyzed man was blessed beyond measure. He received healing from the King of Kings and Lord of Lords because he had the blessing of friends who cared so much that they would stop at nothing for him. I mean, think about this. These men literally tore up the roof of someone's home. That's pretty amazing. Well, we all need friends like these who will do whatever it takes to carry us to Jesus. Let's take a look at another verse. We're going to look in Proverbs. That's in the Old Testament, right after the book of Psalms. So Proverbs 18, 24 says, One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Well, that's the kind of friend I want. A friend is a great blessing. Having a friend who will do whatever it takes to carry you to Christ is beyond amazing. Now, being a friend who will do whatever it takes to carry your friends to Jesus, the way these friends carry the paralyzed man is even better. You want to be that kind of friend. So, how do you carry your friend to Jesus? Well, you don't have to tear any roofs apart. But what can you do? Pray for your friends. Pray. Carry their needs to the Lord in prayer. Stand in faith with them and stand in the gap for them. They may have specific prayer needs for health, family issues, or it may be that they're not yet saved. And you can bring that to the Lord as well. Praying for a friend is the best thing you can do for them. Praying for your friend's needs without ceasing, without stopping, and asking others to pray with you. That's the equivalent of tearing off the roof. So what else can you do? Show them Jesus. Don't just tell them about Jesus, show them Jesus. You may be the only Bible someone ever reads. So what does that mean, you may wonder? You should always conduct yourself in a way that does not cause your friend to sin. Aside from ensuring his healing, these friends demonstrated great faith to the paralyzed man. If his faith wasn't as strong as theirs beforehand, I'm sure it increased dramatically afterward. Telling your friends about Jesus is important. Uh, we talked about that a little bit last week. Uh, you should absolutely witness to your friends, but showing them Jesus can do more than words ever could. If you tell them about the Lord, but then you act in a way that's totally opposite of that, you can come in the way of them desiring to know more about Jesus. That's serious. I've got one more thing that you can do for your friends. Never give up. Never stop praying for them. Don't stop showing them the love of Jesus. Never think they are too far gone. Never stop having faith that they are going to come to salvation in Jesus Christ. So boys and girls, Jesus is right there, just waiting for you to tear off the roof. So let's go ahead and pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, I am so thankful for all these boys and girls who are watching this morning. Thank you for providing us a way to stay in touch 
even when we can't be together physically. May this lesson about the four friends who brought their paralyzed friend to Jesus be a wake-up call to each one of us. Help us to be the type of friends who bring our friends to Jesus no matter what. Please place on our heart the name of a friend that we can be praying for and sharing the love of Jesus with. Show us ways that we can love each other with the love that only comes from you. In your name I pray, amen. Uh, boys and girls, I'd like to challenge you for next week. Send me a video of you reciting the books of the Old or the New Testament. So here's a quick video of my kids reciting the books of the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. I know many of you have learned the books of the Bible during Sunday school, during Awana, vacation Bible school, and at home with your parents. Well, we will play your video during our lesson next week. So everyone who sends me a video will be entered in a drawing for a Sonic gift card. So go ahead and send those videos in. Send them to Angela at fbcparis.com. All right, thanks everyone. I hope you'll have a great week. Bye.